late 1978, a new generation of teenagers have become bored with the punk explosion. The constant preening of McLaren and Westwood, the commercialization of the original ideals, and the failure of the second generation of bands to live up to its musical promise all contributed to the decline of punk. There was a riot every time we played. It's, it's really crap, they said, get off. There'd be skinners in one corner, rockers, mods, punks. We'd start playing and it'd be a four-way free-for-all. Getting into um, you know the whole kind of sort of mod thing the second time around was you know it just kind of sort of took you on this wonderful journey. A fresh approach was needed, and British youth looked back to the 60s to provide it. You know, the, the mod revival came along, right? and uh, you know, kids were jogging around in parks on scooters again. And uh, in the meantime, I kind of modulated to uh, a show for driven Rolls Royce. And I was just about pulling my driveway to this house. Uh, I couldn't be, be turned, turned off the road, and there was just a, a, a bunch of mods sitting on, on scooters, right? Uh, so my chauffeur beeped his horn a couple of times, and they all turned around and went, how ah, far? All of them went screaming at us, but they moved out of the way again because we edged forward. And as I was driving past, they were you know, sort of screaming abuse at me, like, fucking old bastard. And uh, a couple of them had like sort of, you know, who signs on the back on the who been on the back of the jumper, but I guess they never found out who I was trying to get on a bloody driveway. The group are led by singer and songwriter Paul Weller. At 24, he's become something of a spokesman for the new beat Paul Weller was unique, a suit-wearing, self-confessed mod who played fast, furious, 60s-style rock that owed as much to the who as the Sex Pistols. His band, The Jam, sat uncomfortably amongst the punks of the late 70s, and he strove hard to create a new image. Pretty much Paul Weller single-handedly invented the mod revival. You know, he was a mod, he was in a band, the band were really good, so people, you know, got into following them around. And he was responsible for taking a lot of kind of punks and skinheads away from their scenes and getting them to follow the, the jam, which is where the mod scene came from. You know, in 78, 79, these were just jam fans who all ended up dressing the same, and it created a scene. Well, I think the, the mod thing came about because people had been quite disillusioned with punks and what happened to punks of 77, 78, where the scene became dreadfully commercialised. Um, suddenly, punk clothing was becoming much more uh, accessible in sorts of places where you would never, ever expect to see it. Uh, and so lots of people who were looking around, for, always looking for something a bit different, um, alighted on the mod thing, which I think in a lot of people's minds was sparked by the way that the jam particularly uh, used to dress in 77 time. I became a, a mod, I suppose, July, August 1978, and I went to a gig at Wembley Arena called the Great British Music Festival with the jam and uh, Generation X and loads of bands of that ilk. And I had my full mod thing on. I had a Union Jack jacket from the bass player at the jam and I walked in there and I met about 50 other mods that night and that was the first time I was aware that there was any other mods at all. I thought I was the only one, apart from obviously the jam, who were the big influence I suppose in terms of dressing. I feel that Paul Weller was a, a big influence on the mod revival through coming through the punk thing with the jam. A lot of people wanted someone to follow, someone to look up to and uh, you know because of his songwriting capabilities and the, the stage that the jam had got to it was very very good for everyone to sort of have someone to follow without paul weller there wouldn't have been a mod revival definitely not at that time um no one i didn't even know what a mod was so i saw the jam obviously i used to go and see them a lot they were another punk band that i enjoyed going to see and uh, i could have probably quite happily been a joe strummer clone at the time i was probably a Paul Weller clone, but as I say, it did give me my own identity and I, I really grew from that. So Paul Weller was important. The, the jam with the catalyst, mm. but you know, through them, you know, you got to hear about, you know, bands like The Creation and, and bands like The Action. Yeah. And, you know, it just kind of took you off on, on a sort of, you know, totally, sort of like, you know, to a totally different place, really. We was originally started back in about 1977, supporting bands like The Buzzcocks and a few other bands. We was called The Sockets who were a very, very bad, poor 
second rate punk band. So we found something that we could identify with more. We preferred the music style, we preferred the clothes. So we got involved in the sort of mod sound. My two favourite bands were the, were the Chords and the Purple Arts. Um, you know, those were the two that, that, for me, were the real sort of meat and potatoes of the whole thing. I think we were just listening to the same sort of music that a lot of people listen to, an amalgamation of, you know, 60, 65 sort of stuff, and a lot from 76, 79. You know, you listen to the sort of stuff there, the, through, like Who Meets the Clash meets Oscox. <laughs> Over the kinks, you know, it's just like good pop music. Where are you going to put a label on it? You know, it's good stuff in 1971, it's good stuff in 51 and 81. It's just that it happened to be at that particular period of time, which is where we were. I love the um, Purple Hearts. They were exactly where we were, you know, the pretty things, the Yarbos. I, to me, I uh, couldn't fool them. Secret Affair were a bit slick, but a lot more Motown influence, which wasn't my thing. The chords were quite punky, possibly too punky. Musical influences for when I was a mod were the Yardbirds, Early Who, The Clash especially, uh, Generation X, so a lot of punk bands delved back a bit further, found out why the punk bands were the way they were, and early 60s rhythm and blues bands, you know, The Who, The Early Stones, great. Or our influences when we were in the Purple Hearts were taken from The Who, The Small Faces, The Seeds, Generation X, The Jam, The Clash, The Buscocks, everyone. Although the jam may have brought the new mods together, it became apparent that the movement had its own history and influences. The mod revival period at the beginning was not true at all to the original concept of the 60s. I think the mod revival initially was based on the jam and a conscious grabbing of 60s icons like a Parker or a Scooter or a Target T-shirt or whatever. When our album Quadrophenia came out uh, a long time after the mods had, had disappeared, people seeing the album and flicking through the book you know, look, looked at like young kids dressed as mods and went, oh, that looks pretty cool where it's dressed. Well, maybe, that, maybe that started it. I mean, the, the film came uh, quite a bit later. Quadrophenia, the album, started the whole ball rolling and it, it, it burnt very slowly for a long time. And then Quadrophenia, the film, just about finished it off. I was 16 probably when Quadrophenia came out, so it was a big thing, you know, and it just made it more accessible to kind of people, um, people who, you know, hadn't come across it before. So it, it made the scene more vibrant, for, certainly for a while. When we started making Quadrophenia, right, and started writing the script, I had no thoughts that the film would even end up in the cinema. You just, at that, when you first start your, your career, you don't know about box office, you don't know about critics even, you just want to make a film. I never knew that 20 years later that the film would still be being shown around and still be a bit of a cult film. I wrote a film script in uh, 74 called Brummel's Last Riff and I sent it down to Townsend because I knew that they were into films and I put a, a PS on the bottom of the letter to him saying, saying I could write a, a film script for Quadrophenia if we were interested and um, in the end I also wrote the novel which tied in with it. I've got some reservations about Quadrophenia. Um, for me, it's a film about mods. It's not a mod film. There's a subtle difference, but in terms of mod, it's all it's all the difference, really. Part of the mod revival was actually uh, I did have the, the film to blame. You know, the, 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 I guess the young people went to and went, "Wow, that was a really cool way to be. Let's just do it again." You know? For me, it didn't pay enough attention to the detail. I mean, if mod has nothing else, it has an absolutely forensic attention to detail, which was lacking really in some parts of the film, although there's some priceless moments in it, and it slipped into the psyche of a certain segment of the nation, which I think is absolutely fantastic. But for me, portraying a period in the mid-60s, the film didn't quite look right. I mean, there were kids running around in clothes which you had been hung for in the 60s, and it, it was something that was just dreadful. Um, but having said that, it I think it's a story of youth which will basically be as relevant for any post-war generation, really. And I think that is, that is the strength of the film, really. I think Quadrophenia um, played a large part in, in making people realise what mods were. There were a lot of mods before Quadrophenia, but Quadrophenia really blew it open. And after Quadrophenia, I think it spread around the world quite quickly. You know, mods in LA, mods in Sydney, things like that. And I think that... that gave impetus to, to what was just a very small thing based around the jam and maybe 500 people uh, and maybe 20 bands and then it just suddenly became 
you know, the world went mod crazy after Quadrophenia. Growing up in the early 70s, that was a very exciting thing to look back on. Not Beatles, because that was too clean. Uh, not the Rolling Stones, because just didn't appeal. But The Who and that 60s image was very appealing. Thank <laughs> you.